How we doing? So, Kevin, apparently you got the first pick off of Ryan here <laughs> in camp. Uh, how nice was it to be able to pull that one in? It was great. You know, I've been seeing everybody's right. No, Ryan ain't through no picks during practice. So I had to end the streak today. But, no, nah, man, honestly, Ryan's been doing a great job of, you know, kind of going through our defense. Obviously, you know, being here, obviously on both sides, we kind of understand what teams or what we're trying to do to each other. So he's been doing a great job of being precise and on that play, obviously running two-minute, uh, making sure that, you know, got to go to the field. If you're in the game with a pick, uh, it's great. So I was able to make a play, uh, kind of in a little robber situation right there. So I was able to read his eyes and make a play on the ball. You try not to make – coach can just come up the road, come to a practice, and, and continue to see what you do here in the NFL. I mean, how special is that to be able to have that? It's very special. Me and Coach Stock has, have a very special relationship. We text and we talk on and off a lot. Uh, obviously, he texted me right before training camp started, told, him, told me good luck, uh, told me he loves me. And I mean, we're always checking in with each other. I went to see him down there this spring, early this spring. So, uh, like, But like you said, just the distance, 40 minutes from Murfreesboro, it's just great, man. Coach Stock has always been a great mentor for, for me, and I definitely appreciate him. Try not to make him too big an example out of lack of training camp interceptions. But from your standpoint on the defense, what are you kind of seeing from the offense that's allowing it to stay clean? Uh, just I think just their operation, uh, obviously, like I said, with Tannehill just being sharp, uh, his timing has been great with his receivers. Receivers have been making plays because they get paid too. Um, but like I said, I don't try to put a lot into it because I think last year training camp, I only had one interception. It was during the red zone period, uh, ended up getting five during the season. So, uh, I mean, honestly, for me, it's all about competing. We're going to make plays. They're going to make plays. But obviously, during training camp, you will for sure want your starting quarterback, really all your quarterbacks, to not throw any interceptions. But they're going to happen. And uh, it's all about how you respond after you make a bad play or we make a bad play. How has the relationship with Stock evolved that you've got deeper in your career and further away from being a player on this team? Uh, they, I mean, honestly, they, it just keeps evolving. I would just say, obviously, I'm not the the young man that I was when I first got to college. Uh, but it's more about just the check-ins, the mental check-ins, him just checking on me. Uh, those things mean a lot. Uh, I still have pretty much all my college coaches, uh, from Coach Bobby, who's my safety coach, Coach Ellis, I run into him a lot, Coach Tyrone Nix, they all check in on me. And that's, what's mainly, that's what it's mainly about. And I've developed a lot of great relationships through my time in college. And like I said, I'm just appreciative of those guys just continue to reach out to me. Uh, it means a lot. What are you seeing, from Kevin, from the receivers that you're competing against on a regular basis, whether it's you know Robert, Traylon, or maybe some of the guys on the back end? Uh, I mean, I'm, they're just being highly competitive. I think um, – Obviously, starting with Robert, being the veteran, being the leader of that room, uh, he's doing a great job setting example, being one of the last guys off the field. Uh, obviously, with trailing, he's working through, obviously, being a rookie. But at the end of the day, he's going up making plays. There's obviously still a lot of things he needs to work on. But I've been very impressed with Racy McMath. Uh, he's been making a lot of big plays down the field. We're going to need him with that. And, and even Kyle Phillips, uh, even the rookie. I mean, we're doing our one-on-one -on -one tackle drills, and he calls me out first. Even though I'm always the first guy going up there, well, he should already know. But he calls me out. I like the, I like the confidence. He's been making a lot of plays. He, really good route runner. Um, a lot of these guys. And obviously, even, you know, kind of learning experience in the last two minutes, the last period, you know, because I kind of talked about Caleb with the media the other day. Like, you know, a lot of times they practice is just kind of four plays and done. They're going eight play drives. Some of the receivers getting a little tired. So we're just learning experience. And every single practice, every single period is all about learning experience for everybody from the DBs to the receivers. It's all about trying to learn and learn. And every day just trying to stack good days on top of good days. You said the other day, first offensive pass interference call is on me. Mm -hmm. Wants the receivers to be super physical and then maybe ask them to ratchet it down. How good is it for you guys maybe that, that it's more physical than it probably would be allowed to be by officials? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the way that our team is built, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We want to be physical. Obviously, we know we're going to run the ball. So you can see we even the personnel guys we have. We have our slot guys, but we also have guys on receivers. They're going to be big, so he wants them to be physical. He wants to be able to, you know, and I think we've, we went into games like that. A lot of times, especially on third downs where – Guys are, you know, so in most cases in third and short third and mediums, we're gonna they're gonna see man coverage, and sometimes we weren't always physical. So, obviously, knowing guys like AJ Brown who we had before, we want guys to be physical. So, um, but for us, we just understand if they're gonna be physical. We have to be able to battle with that, and that's gonna be game plan throughout the year. How physical are these receivers? We know we're gonna face guys coming up here uh, in a couple of weeks with guys like uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who we know he's gonna be physical at the top of the route. So just understanding your personnel, who you're going up against, and be able to battle that uh, and just understand what those guys are going to do uh, in every situation. I see you popping out in one-on-ones against Kyle Phillips. Is that something like you kind of take it personal? Like, hey, I got to stop this little streak that he's going on? No, nah, I mean, honestly, uh, it's just certain situations. Obviously, we know in games, uh, more often than not, state just cover tight ends. But at the end of the day, uh, we want to be able to expand our roles. So if we're in a situation where we can be in, not necessarily talking scheme, but 
I would rather – I want our defense to be able to be in whether it's base defense or – our nickel defense, hey, I can go out there and cover the slot. We can give good, better disguises and things like that. So I just want to go out there and show that I can cover these fast slot guys. I can cover big bodies on the outside. Just trying to do as much as I can to add to my game uh, so I can show the coaches that, hey, maybe we can be in different personnel depending on what type of team we're playing. Last year you guys said Dane was your secret weapon. Uh, who's the secret weapon now? Um, I won't know. We got to keep it a secret. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, honestly – we have a lot of guys who I feel like is going to be real good X factors for us. And I, I've kind of talked to Christian Fulton about that. Obviously, we drafted Roger, who I think is going to be a really good corner for us. But, I, I, you know, I'm talking to Christian like, hey, you're going to be an X factor for us. You know, a lot of guys have different expectations and, uh, you know, had different standards for themselves. But I say, hey, you, you know, a Pro Bowl year for you has to be the standard. You have to be trying to reach that next level. You had a good year last year. You know, he had some little injuries and had some laws or whatever. But a Pro Bowl year has to be good for you. And I think if Christian could take his game to the next level, that will help our defense out a lot. You have, have six straight winning seasons now, two straight division titles, four trips to the playoffs, yet everyone's talking about the Colts. Have you got them right where you want them? Man, I don't really pay attention to that. Man, I've been here long enough to understand that I've never, we've never been the talk of the town. I mean, that's just what it is. It's not necessarily that I prefer it that way, but I just got to understand that it really doesn't matter. You know, preseason rankings and all that stuff really doesn't matter because they can, you can judge everybody at zero to zero, but it's all about when the season get going, who's going to be the team that obviously try to start fast, but who's finished stronger. So that's really what it's about for us and for me, just trying to make sure as a team, we're just staying locked in on the now and not worried about, you know, what they're saying about the rankings and, and Madden ratings and all that stuff, because it really doesn't matter. And what's that with Christian? You know, he, he's getting a lot of work. Some days tough days, some days not. Like, what do you say to him to keep him going and keep him progressing towards that Pro Bowl corner you want him to be? No, I mean, I, I talked to all those guys. At the end of the day, in my opinion, it's the hardest position in football. Obviously, quarterback, left tackle. Uh, but that cornerback position, because, you know, people that don't watch football, they don't really know football, they don't understand when a guy fit, misfit a run and they break down. But they see if a DV misses a tackle, hey, that's his fault. And so at the end of the day, you know, we always have to be, we always have to be on point because we're giving up big plays. That's what people see. So I think it's just a hard position to play. So understand that you're going to give up some plays. You know, you're going to face a lot of elite receivers week in and week out. You're going to make some plays that we get paid to do. But it's all about how you respond to that. You know, if you give up a play, don't turn into two or three. So that's just really what I want to see from him or continue to see from him is that just keep battling back, trying to make sure that, hey, I give up a play. Hey, okay, let's flush it on to the next play. And I think he's done a good job with that. Well, so you talked about Racy a little bit earlier, uh, Kevin. What, what do you see as maybe a difference or two from Racy last year to this that he's making some of those big plays and kind of grabbing some you know, I think it's just the confidence. You know, I, I've talked about it to some of the young guys. When you go into your second year as a player, rookie year, you come into training camp, you know, you kind of had, you know, you're carrying pads, you're in the lunchroom, thinking about what song I'm going to sing in front of the team. It's just like a different type of pressure when you're as a rookie. But coming into your second year, just kind of like a breath of fresh air. You, I kind of understand what coach is looking for. You can kind of answer questions in the meeting room before the coach even asks you. So just that confidence level is there. And I think he just understands what position he's in. He's trying to come out here and create a role for himself. And I think he's doing a great job. As long as he continues to stack days, he'll have a role for, for us. Uh, he'll have a role for himself on his team. What's the craziest thing anybody asks you to do as a rookie? And do you... <laughs> you ask rookies to do anything special for you? Uh, what's the crazy thing I've ever asked as a rookie? Nothing crazy. I mean, I used to have guys ask for, like, Popeyes on the plane. So I used to hear them and try to go get dressed real fast and run to Popeyes. was scared of being late on the plane. Um, Denora Cersei to have me go get, like, little Jolly Ranchers from the gas station or whatever. Nothing too crazy. I honestly don't ask a lot from the, uh, the rookies, at least outside of the building, other than getting the snacks because, I, honestly, I haven't been eating any snacks. So I don't really ask them for a lot. But uh, trust me, I will. Eventually, when I figure out something, I might tell them to go get my dry cleaning or something like that. We'll see. I was going to ask how that goes because you told us you were like, I'm not eating snacks. I'm trying to stay away from right. all the burgers. Yeah. So I'm, are you sticking to it? I've been doing really, really good, honestly. Doing really, really good. Uh, you know, I have my cheat meals every now and again. Like, I might have, like, some, some beef or something because I haven't really been eating a lot of beef. I might have some beef for lunch or something like that. But i honestly been doing very good. Uh, I have my cutoff time at 7 o'clock at night. And I made you drink some tea to finish the night off. So I've been doing really good. I feel good. Um, but honestly, if we have a little off day uh, coming up, I think me and my lady might go out to dinner and might, you know, get some good appetizers. Yeah. You gonna watch a preseason game tonight, KB? Very first one. Yeah, I'll check. I'll, if if I, we got some time, obviously it's probably going to be in the locker room, probably going to be here. Uh, I'm going to be able to check out some of the stuff. I know, I'll, you know, probably most of the starters not going to play. But I'll be able to check out because, I'm, you know, I kind of just like watching different situations in games try to stay locked in on stuff like that. So I'll, I'll check in on it. <coughs> Yesterday brought in a second player who uh, had <coughs> USFL experience earlier this year. 
uh, I know that the, the other guys are making those decisions to bring these guys in, but when you see him on the field, you know, particularly Shakur getting that, get on the field, I think he's got a pick already. Can you tell that they were playing football earlier this year, or uh, is there any physical traits that you can notice? Well, I mean, I think that Shakur was a player that we liked coming out of Michigan State, um, you know, in the nickel, and, you know, had an opportunity to, to add him, and uh, he's – Kind of come in pretty quickly and showed the uh, ability to understand what we're doing in special teams and, and defense. And so, you know, he's he's gotten an opportunity. I'd say he's you know, done well to take advantage of it and, and earn more reps. How do you feel about practice today? Uh, kind of like I do all the time. I think there's some good, there's bad, and you know, we just have to continue to eliminate the stuff that gets you beat. But that's that's where I'm at each and every day, probably. Did it seem like Malik was processing things quicker? I mean, just from us watching, it seemed like the ball was coming out quicker. Is that accurate, and what would you say? Yeah, I think from my view, uh, from being behind him uh, in some places um, and watching, and his composure, I think, is a really good place to start in the in the two-minute. You know, there's a lot of chaos there, and, you know, we've really focused on the other situations uh, up until this point, and so this was a good taste of getting that two-minute in there. Uh, we'll, we'll do that quite quite frequently from here on out, but you know, really put a lot of time into first and second down, third down in the red zone, and so now, you know, trying to trying to install and introduce that and in all the different situations that come up. Reese McMath has gotten a lot more reps recently. What have you seen from him that has has earned him those those spots in first team reps? Well, I mean, he's you know, tried to tried to get open. He's made some big plays for us. I think his understanding of what we're asking him to do has really improved, and his comfort level there. Uh, you know, we just really just once you guys can, once we can try to get some of these guys to understand where they fit and, and how we want them to do it, or just what's asked of them or required of them, you know, then you start to see a lot of growth. And you know, Racy uh, has done that on 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 offense, and and hopefully can continue to do that. Tony Dumas was, was talking about Haskins' ability to get up to a good rate of speed at the handoff at the line of scrimmage for a guy that's not a blazer. How, how attractive a quality is that? Did that catch your eye as, as you were studying? Well, I mean, there's a, there's a good run style there. You know, he runs behind his pads. He's got some play strength, uh, some versatility. Um, probably caught the ball or, or ran routes better in the spring. You know, we still have to see that here a little bit when we ask him to do that. But, um, you know, just having been our third day in pads, you know, for some of these backs, that, that that's critical and that work's going to be important in the preseason work. And, um, you know, I think everybody's ability to, to get to where they're, you know, get to a certain speed, especially at running back, but also be able to make the cuts that, you know, are, are going to be needed. You know, you just really can't predict where, where the hole is going to be, and, and that's important so that you know, they're not stutter stepping or, you know, sitting there dancing. So, you know, we're going to keep working with all those guys. How does Shad Weaver look uh, coming back off the injury during the first week or so of camp? Good. I thought he probably had his best day, his most, you know, active day, you know, in that call it which would be pretty similar to how he was last year. I think you watched, you know, we'd work on some things in practice and then he'd, you know, get to the games and really just show up and, and be productive and, and get noticed. And I think that that probably is trending in the same direction. Um, but I would say that he's improved. He's an improved player and he's trying to, um, you know, not only grasp the defense and what's, you know, getting better there, but also on special teams because, he knows how important that is for for those guys that aren't starters at outside linebacker or any any position really to to be proficient in special teams. What has Tory Carter done to go from practice squad guy to your clear cut fullback in a year's time here? Well, I, I think we all really like his play demeanor. You know, his physicality. You know, it's straight ahead, no fair dodging, and um, you know he he brings a presence to to our to our offense and to our run game. Um, as well as special teams, so he, he was a, he's a he's a physical player by nature. You got on the offense at one point for not running to somebody who scored a touchdown and celebrating. How important? It seems. Yeah, they're hard to come by. I mean, I I, I think it's hard to, to score in this league. So, um, just a reminder that we're going to celebrate touchdowns with the teammates. You know, that's the easiest way to to avoid you know taunting is is go celebrate with teammates. And if there's teammates around to celebrate with, then then that's a good thing. So, you know, we're just working some conditioning and, you know, those guys are, are at, we're asking them to finish in the end zone and then, you know, the guy scored on the other side and they were like, 
I wish I knew he was going to score because I probably would have headed in that direction. But, you know, we were just trying to get some conditioning out of here, which I thought was really good, getting those guys, you know, running to the end zone. You mentioned last week just seeing the line, obviously, in pads. You see a lot more there. What, what have you seen with three days in pads? Well, I mean, I see improvement. I see, you know, defensive linemen that are playing with, with the techniques that we're asking them to play with um, in the run game, you know, transitioning, um, you know, in first and second down. And then, you know, third down sometimes comes to working together, knowing where you're supposed to be. And um, offensively, I think that there's there's been some, some improvement. Some guys are getting better football shape and, um, you know, starting to understand and take the drills to, to the to the group period and the group period to the team period. Kyle Phillips has been getting more reps with the ones recently and 11 on 11s, different things like that. Has that always been the plan with him or is that a result of him earning those reps through his practice? Yeah, I wouldn't say that that was, you know, the, the plan is to come out here and, you know, define a role for yourself and, um, you know, and help develop a team and build a team. So, you know, there was there was no plan. Um, you know, we'll see where it goes and see how it looks. There was, you know, some things that he did well today and there's some things, you know, mistakes that he made. What's he been doing well consistently? Well, I mean, he gets, he's a player that gets open. I think he's an instinctive player. You know, I think to play inside, um, all those guys have to have some level of instinctiveness. Um, what leverage, if it's man, what leverage is it, where I need to break. You know, there's a lot of timing that's involved with the quarterback. You know, it's hard to, to go at someone and, and be ready to throw to them and, and not be where they're supposed to be. So the timing and the understanding is critical because, you know, the pass rush, it's not all seven on seven. So, you know, getting open quickly and then when it's zone, you know, being able to, to, to be where you're supposed to be in, in that zone. Last week you said uh, Aaron Brewer was a, was a $2 tougher than a $2 steak. I bet you've eaten a lot of $2 steaks in your day, Corey. <laughs> Plant-based protein now. Your team's got me switched. Uh, what, how do you no, resist I... asking him to be a bigger steak? Why do you, why do you, you know, he's 290, he says he's good there. Why are you good with him there? Well, I mean, sometimes the 6-ounce filet is just as good as a 12-ounce filet. I mean, it's a, sometimes it's, it's more tender and, you know, they can cook it right. You know, you probably burn the crap out of a big, big filet. So, um we, we just try to monitor where everybody is each and every day. We try to monitor hydration um, and whether they can do their job. And, and it, effectively, that's the most important thing. You know, some guys are naturally bigger. Um, so right now we're just working with what, what his skill set is and what his body type is. And we monitor strength. We, we monitor, you know, all those different things. And... Um, you know that that's that's where we're at with this particular player. Overall, coming, up, coming in off a day off, were you happy with your team's energy today? Yeah, I mean, I thought they went out, and I mean, I think you know it was humid. I think everybody recognizes that, and you know, it's something that we have to be able to push through when there's a lot of work that needs to be done in a short amount of time. Um, but I thought it was a good start. I mean, 27 percent of the game is played where we practice today. It's played in the red zone. It's played in two minutes. That that's over a quarter of our season is going to be played in the red zone or in two minutes. And uh, that, that's why days like today are so critical.